Hello folks, on the basis that what I'm doing here is very likely to go wrong, I've decided I had better start filming it um, so that you'll see where I went wrong, so that you don't go wrong. So short intro, we're now communicating over CAN with the Model 3 power conversion system. We've identified the command message to start the DC to DC converter. We're getting the DC to DC converter to start uh, waking up. Um, you can actually hear it when you send the start command to it. It's kind of click click type of thing going on there. So we've got high voltage and a car battery connected to this thing. It didn't start up previously because I don't think I had enough capacitance on the high voltage supply considering I'm using rectified 240 volts AC to supply my fake HV. Uh, I've added some more capacitance, so I figure if something is going to go wrong, it's probably going to go wrong now. So um, we're all punched up here. I'm going to send the command message, and let's see if something goes badly wrong. So, all right, time to connect our fake high voltage. Switch it on, increase our uh, high voltage up, oh, hopefully the capacitor doesn't explode. Okay, I have 327 volts on my fake HV, we've got some capacitance down here, um, rectifiers, all kinds of crazy things, 12 volt car battery at a clamp meter. Uh, now, I think where's the best place to put you guys to catch the carnage? Because if, you know, well, the gimbal will kind of shake out any of the... I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll set you guys up here. And we'll steer you around so that you can, you know, hopefully get the flash. I've got the high frame rate set up here now as well. So, okay. Sending the start message. Please don't blow up. Oh, that's different. Yeah, I can actually see the lights flickering. But what's happening is my voltage is diving too much. Uh, I could see on the multimeter there um, that we were dropping well under 300 volts. If I put the multimeter graphing function on, and pause it but we're diving down to about 280 volts there so that's obviously where uh, Elon decides that um, that we shouldn't really be trying to start up our DC DC converter now where are you going on me come back come back come back no don't fill my crotch damn you right other problem is that we don't actually know beyond the fire bit uh, what the message should contain. Um, so that's the other problem. Any of the can captures that I've been able to download for Model 3s do have the message in there, which is uh, 22A for you people that might be interested. It is a four, uh, it is a four byte message. Uh, I'll put all the details of this on the forum and on GitHub anyway, but uh, it looks like I'm going to need me a 400 volt battery in order to get this thing to uh, wake up. I don't think the rectified mains is going to do it because for all I know, I'm actually telling it to start pumping 200 amps into our uh, 12 volt battery here. So... Um, yeah, pretty cool, I have to say. I'm a little disappointed that I don't have enough grunt to run this yet. Uh, but we, uh, we'll figure that part out. That part's not too hard. Um, pesky rain. Okay. 
22A is a DC DC command message, and 224 or 224 is a DC DC status message. Now, things get a little bit interesting because 264 is our charger status message, which we do have interpretations for. Now, 264 is our charger status message. And one message that the high voltage controller sends to the power conversion system um, is, you guessed it, 26A. So, what is interesting about all this is that while there is no logic board within the power conversion system as we had in the, the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 chargers, I suspect that they have simply moved the logic board functions into the high voltage controller because from what I'm working out on the CAN me messages at the minute, it's very like the way that the Gen 2 and the Gen 3 chargers are controlled with fairly simple CAN commands to the power modules. Uh, the, the Gen I guess even the camera got a bit bored of me can't say I blame it. Um, as I was saying, in the Gen 2 DC-DC converter, for example, uh, the DC-DC converter is commanded by one three-byte long message. And now in our mo Model 3, the DC-DC converter is commanded by one four-byte long message. So, Not there yet, but she's breathing, folks. What I do want to do is I want to show you guys how we ultimately got this IPC can thing figured out, because this was a real song and, uh, and dance. You'll see I had a couple of extremely excruciatingly boring videos up uh, about the wonders of uh, this, uh, this IPC can. So if you're an insomniac and you need to go to sleep, uh, ch do check those recent vi vi videos out. Now, a couple people very made some very helpful suggestions about what was going on. Because as you may recall, we just had problems communicating on that IPC CAN bus. Because basically what they were doing was they were sending CAN without a CAN transceiver. Um, I did some digging around on the high voltage controller PCB and it seemed to be going to several places but one of them is this little QFP device with a part number that doesn't read back to anything. So I thought hmm Musk definitely up to something. So I thought, I thought okay what if we put a CAN transceiver on the, the IPC CAN bus? So what I did was very quickly set up uh, Texas Instruments SN65HVD255 on a breadboard and connected it to the IPC CAN, um, whatever they called, TXRX lines and that seemed to really bring the thing to life all my uh, can messages on the you know the PCS then started sending can from a power on state which it had never done and we're now able to send and receive messages to the PCS um, over its its IPC CAN bus, and that's how we're able to send the command message now for the DC DC, and we'll ho we'll hopefully be able to bring that to life. Um, now, it's kind of ridiculous in so far as that I have a transceiver here on IPC CAN. I've you know a very short, just two little wires then bringing normal CAN high speed CAN. Uh, to my Arduino, which is then, trans, you know, there's a CAN transceiver on there, which is going into the CAN controller and changing it all back. So it's a little bit crazy, but it does work. So we, 
whatever controller that we design for this thing will you know probably have to have something like that in it but we'll figure that out that's a bit further down the road we need to get this thing to run for so give you a quick look here of what we've got going on uh, let's have a quick look see here so um, what I have here is for the first time obviously we're running with the high voltage controller completely disconnected um, it's powered down that's its power supply there it's switched off uh, on a breadboard here then uh, we have these two wires the purple and the green wire are bringing the the uh, the ipc can tx and rx lines onto this little adapter board here we have the, uh, the CAN transit transceiver. Then we have our two normal CAN lines, the red and the blue, which are going into our Arduino Dewey. Um, and that's how we can now send and receive CAN to our PCS over IPC CAN. So there you go. As to what, as to what IPC CAN stands for, I genuinely don't know. The only possibly relevant thing that I've found just doing a basic internet search is something called interprocess can. So maybe that's what the Musk is doing in this particular case. I don't know. Um, I know you guys don't like me recording screens, but my OBS here on my crappy Windows laptop uh, really doesn't like working. So you'll just have to put up with, with, with it, or if not, go and watch some funny cat videos. So you'll see that we have a bunch of messages that are coming back now from the PCS. Um, we have message 264 and message 224. Message 264 uh, contains information about the charger. And message 224 contains um, information about the DC DC converter. And if I send the start message, although I don't have the HV on, but if I just send the start message, you'll see we start seeing pre charge start. So we're at the minute we're at DC DC status idle. If I send our command message again, hopefully you'll be able to see this. I do apologize. I need to get a better laptop. So there you can see when I send a command message, we get pre-charge start uh, coming in here. So I think the problem that we're not getting the DC-DC to kick on for us is just down to, to me not having a 400 volt battery here. Uh, message 22a then I've got the kind of best guess of it as I say I will put some data on here I've been just using the fuzzing window on savvy can uh, in order to just set and clear bits here but as I said I'll put a I'll put what I've found so far both up on the github and on the open inverter forum for any of you guys that care to look uh, so that's about it I've bored you to pieces for too long now I suppose um, any ideas do leave a comment below I think we're getting close with our model 3 power conversion system Thank you for tagging along and uh, we will see you in the next video or hopefully we'll have something working with this thing. Got a lot of other projects going on too that I've got to juggle but I've been really enjoying working on the PCS. So that's it for now and until next time happy damn it not yet. Don't forget to check the links in the description for Patreon, PayPal, GitHub, Open Inverter Forum, whatever else I can think to put in there. Uh, 
we will see you in the next episode. And until then, happy DCDC converting.